So we're going out on the video chat right now to join uh, one of the most popular Rough Rider figures in the franchise's history. I don't think that I'm over-exaggerating that. Kenton Keith joins us this morning. Three and a half seasons with the Riders, couple in the National Football League, then the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and KK's with us today. Good morning, Kenton. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing, Ryan? Long time no see, man. Far too long. So are you hooking up with us in Nebraska this morning, or where do we find you at? I'm actually in Austin, Texas. That's where I'm based at right now. How how are things in Austin, Texas? Is it hotter than Campfire Chili down there? Oh yeah, you know it stays hot down here. That's one of the reasons I like it here, man. For you know, for my business, year-round fitness. So it's a great place to be. Ken, you've been doing that for a while now, a few years, if I'm not mistaken. Tell me how. I, and I know this fitness thing and fitness coaching in the states is just taking off like a rocket. Um, what are you doing in the industry? Um, I'm just pretty much teaching my own craft, you know, uh, throughout my career as a football player. I've always took responsibility of training myself and any any of the other guys that were, you know, in my vicinity. So I've created my own program through, you know, being a pro athlete, uh, being injured, also being a, a fitness trainer at places like Valley Total Fitness and just combining that whole that whole thing and morphing into my own program. We know how big football is in Texas. Let me ask you this. When you're meeting people, talking to them, how big of a deal is it? Not just that you played for the Colts. I see the helmet on the wall and the Jets, but also the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They know who the Riders are down there, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, I think um, every year the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, along with some of the other CFL uh, teams, come down here, if not in Houston or Dallas, a couple times a year to do workouts. So a lot of the guys that are pursuing football, trying to get in football, usually know about the camps or anything like that. So uh, it's always something that I prepare some of the guys that come to me for. So, yeah, it's pretty popular. We're asking our viewers. <laughs> definitely. For... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say definitely, uh, definitely a lot more popular than when I was coming out to Saskatchewan. So uh, the CFL in a, in a, as a whole, you know, out here in America is just blowing up a lot, three times bigger since I started. You know what I mean? So why do you think that is? <clears throat> Uh, social media has a big part of it. Um, definitely. Um, I don't know, man. I just feel like the, the history of the CFL, uh, it reaches more people every year. You know, as you guys bring more Americans up there, there's a lot more, um, word of mouth going on from guys that are playing, guys that are released, guys that are, you know, aspiring to be there. So it's been around, I tell people all the time, it's been around longer than the, uh, the uh, NFL. So of course, you know, it's about time for it to touch the American soil, you know, and 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 be real popular. So that's 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 what I see right now. <clears throat> I agree. Been around twice as long as the NFL. Most people wouldn't believe that. Um, we got questions coming in on the Facebook feed from our viewers for you. I just got one for you, and that is: when you think of your time here, Kenton, what do you think of? Ah. Uh... I say, you know, as far as my life, that was probably one of the funnest times of my life, um, being a Saskatchewan young guy, first time um, being a professional athlete, showcasing my talent on the big screen. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun. I, I learned a lot and I grew a lot. So I guess I said I would say maturing, maturing is the Ken, word I would say for my time in Saskatchewan. Ken Kowski writing us on the Facebook wall. He says, question for KK. What was your favorite memory as a Rough Rider? My favorite memory as a Rough Rider? Um, I would have to say almost every Calgary game I played in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, the Western semifinals of 2003, I believe, against Winnipeg when I uh, first kind of to me, put my name on the map as the style of running back that I was trying to bring to the table coming in after Cedric Shaw. Um, I think it was a playoffs and I had something like three or four touchdowns and never had played the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at the time and never like ranked number one in defense or something like that. But uh, that was the first time I really got to understand, you know, what it was being a professional athlete. You know, uh, I've always felt like I had the talent, but after that, the cameras were in my face. People were trying to do interviews. Autographs were being, you know, signed everywhere. And people don't know that I'm a real introvert. So some of that stuff was hard for me to deal with. Um, but it took some getting used to. And I just feel like that that game was the game that kind of 
jumped me, jumped me to where my career left off at. These guys got a couple yeah. for you too, but I just rem I remember we had more yards rushing that game than passing, KK, if you remember. <laughs> Nealon was probably kissing your feet after the game, uh, and that was one <laughs> of the best Winnipeg teams ever. That was a huge upset to go in there, and that was a fun night. Um, Darren, what do you got for Kent and Keith? Yeah, I mean, you played with the Riders, played with the Colts. Um, obviously, we know there's differences between the leagues, uh, the show, the crowds, you know, the money, but... You know, how similar did you find the Canadian football league? What similarities were there between the CFL and the NFL for you? Similarities, huh? Could like, was there that big of a difference with the uh, with, with your game on the field? Um, as a running back, I would say that's probably one of the positions where the CFL and NFL would be kind of similar. That though, um, besides the. The, the spacing on the of the defensive line versus the offensive line. I think CFL you get a yard and NFL you can be right on the ball, right? So um, other than that, as a running back, everything was real similar, man. Especially being in the CFL, how fast the guys were, it really prepared me for going to the NFL. I think it would have been worse if I went to the NFL first and went to the CFL second. I wouldn't have been able to adjust as easy as I did going from the CFL to the NFL. And I think that's what a lot of guys don't understand, like. Just because you had a name in the NFL, think you're just because you're this certain person in the NFL, that does not carry over to the CFL. You have to be a totally different type of back. I can only speak for backs. You got to be a totally different kind of back because it's are there are different angles. There's a different timing factor. Um, you know the home run points that I call them are in different spots of the field. Especially having that one guy extra on defense makes a lot of difference too. So. Ken, before I was a broadcaster, I was a season ticket holder uh, in Section 27, and my first jersey was a Kent and Keith jersey. Nice. So it's uh, it's nice to catch wow. up with you. But uh, I, I want to know about your return to the CFL with Hamilton. What was that experience like? And was it, you know, because you had your Saskatchewan experience, and I, I imagine it was a positive one. Did you, did you want to come back to Saskatchewan at that time? And, and how different was it to go to Hamilton and, and how that worked out? Um, at the time, <clears throat> I did want to go back to Saskatchewan. I think they had different plans, um, but that's where I ultimately wanted, ultimately wanted to go. I never wanted to play for anybody else, but um, once that door was kind of closed, once I kind of figured out they were going a different way, you know, I was open to going to Hamilton, especially because that Coach Marcel was there, so I had a little taste of Saskatchewan still. Um, but uh, Hamilton is just a different place. You know, I was used to – when you said the CFL – that meant Saskatchewan to me. When you say Saskatchewan, that was all I knew in the CFL. So to go to Hamilton was a whole different world for me. Um, I, like I said, I feel like I grew as a man in Saskatchewan, so that was almost home for me. Uh, you know, my wife and my son are from Saskatchewan, so it was kind of it was a, it was an adjustment for me to um, really put on that yellow and black versus that green man and switch my numbers. You know what I mean? So, but I think I handled it pretty well. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I got hurt. Um, and wasn't able to do what I wanted to do. But I, I, I think that I was, you know, if I was able to stay healthy, I think I would have had a, a nice uh, nice career finishing off at Hamilton. You mentioned your ties to Saskatchewan. I know you do get back here from time to time. Have you been in the new facility? And uh, if so, what are your thoughts? I actually haven't. I haven't been to Saskatchewan, I don't think, since 2016. Uh, I do plan on coming up there. i got to get my passport again. It's expired, so... <laughs> but that's um one of the reasons <laughs> that's one of the reasons I haven't been yet. But um, you know, we plan on we plan on coming up there and my wife asks me every time, uh, when I go to Saskatchewan, what are my top favorite things that I gotta do? And I always tell her, I gotta go to Mr. Breakfast, I gotta <laughs> go to the stadium <laughs> and I gotta go to um uh Tapping Yankees. Oh, it's so outstanding. I was just driving it. But they need by the other day. It needs a new sign though, it's getting a little faded. What do you got, Taylor? Uh, I have one more. I want to ask if uh, if Frontline has been in the studio doing any recordings lately and if you guys are going to release anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, but, you know, me, I, I'm still I'm still an artist. I don't really do a whole lot right now, but I do still have a nice catalog of music that I listen to for myself. I think Nilan is dibbling, dabbling in some music. We kind of reconnected um, over social media these last couple months, but... I don't know what about Shantae Peoples, man. I haven't heard heard about him in a while. Uh, I doubt if he's doing anything like that. But no, nah, frontline is frontline is done, man. <laughs> do, do that you was guys, a nice do, little nice. 
You were ahead of your time. You're, you're ahead of your time, Ken. <laughs> do, go do, ahead, Taylor. Do you guys still talk? Do you, do you still talk to some of your teammates? Uh, Nilon Green, uh, you just said you connected. But but do you guys talk about the glory days of, of playing with the Riders? Are you still friends with any of those guys? Yeah, we do. We talk. Uh, me, you know, more of my circle was more of like, you know, Nilon Green, Santino Hall. I still talk to Reggie Hunt. Um, uh, Emery Beckles, you guys remember Emery Beckles? Little homie. Yeah, that was his nickname homie. here, little homie. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I um I hooked up with Lamar Lee when I went out to um Tampa Bay too. So anytime that we that we can connect, we used to try to connect and let each other. We're near each other. So and then you know at that time at that point we try to take care of each other. If somebody's in your ne- your neighborhood. So speaking of connecting, where in where in where in Houston, Dallas are you? He's in Austin. You're in so. Austin. How far is that from Austin, Houston? Texas. It's a long way. Oh, okay, <laughs> we're coming to Houston. About two, so. two and a half hours. Well, that's yeah. not far. Well, in Saskatchewan terms, it's not far. Is that big? Is that a long ways in Texas terms? Um, two hours driving is two hours driving. So same as me, here. That's not that far. Yeah, it's not I used far. to drive twenty. I used to drive twenty nine hours to Saskatchewan. So I can do that. That's true. Well, we're coming down there with a sports trip, KK, in, in December and doing a couple of these shows down there. So we'll so we'll be in touch. I just want to ask you this. When you do come back, I know you're recognized uh, on the street. Do you like that or do you not like that? That Ryder fans still remember you and they still talk about you to this day, which I would have to think feels good because it's in glowing terms. But if you're recognized on the street, would you just say, ah, don't bother me or would you like it? No, I think the people that, that know me and that see me usually know that, you know, when they see me, you, you know, we I sit down and talk. I'm very humble. I'm, I'm down to earth. So sometimes I do a lot um, more than a lot of football players would do for people. So the people that know me and that has ran across me know that. So I'm always open to it, man. Uh, you know, I know how it feels to be a fan, so I would never hold nothing back from keeping a, keeping a fan from, you know, having a chance to, ask whatever they want to ask or get a get an autograph or speak to me so i'm pretty good with that well in doing this interview uh was a major plus i know you put a smile on a lot of people's faces just watching it so kenton thanks for this and keep in touch and uh, continued success you look great appreciate it man thanks you bet kenton keith from austin texas the home of vince young these days by the way should ask him if he ever runs into vy down there um Kenton, for those younger viewers, I don't want to make him feel old. He's only 38, but it seemed like he was here longer than what he was. Right, gents? Yeah. yeah. Big impact. Yeah. Good time, not a long time. Well, he, what is he, number five all time? Yeah, so Roy Shivers found him, no doubt, out of college, obviously. It was it New Mexico State? Yeah, I believe. Sounds like it. And came to the Riders in 03, spent one season, and boom, was in the NFL with the league, uh, in the league with the Jets in 04. And then back here, 04 to 06, then to the Colts for one season in Indy, and then to the Ticats in 08, 09, as you brought up, which I actually forgot about. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, don't, didn't they always say back then, once you leave the Riders, your career goes <laughs> Not it's, necess- happen- it's happened to a lot of people. It's happened to a lot of guys. Grass mm-hmm. isn't always greener. Although he did play really well with the Colts. Yes. Short, but he, yeah. got, he played. He's he returning kicks there, right? Well, and he was well, running he, the ball, he, too. He, yeah, had, he, was he had an back. impact. Yeah. Well, he's well, doing both. He worked his way up the depth chart, for sure. But then, yeah, he got hurt in Hamilton. And- Two-time All-Star. West Division Most Outstanding Player in 2006. Kenton Keith joining us this morning from Austin, Texas. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.